Many, many years ago, we had a favorite speaker, and I can't remember his name now, Norman. Hmm, he, he taught that one time on, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. And we had an opportunity to see him in person. He kind of got famous, but like a lot of them people, he's so old, he's dead and gone. But anyway, he taught a really good series on Psalm 68, and it starts out like this. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. And then if you skip a couple of verses, it says, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them be exceedingly rejoicing. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. Oh, yes, rejoice before him. Oh, Lord, we come to you this morning with no righteousness except that which we have through your blood, Lord. And we thank you that because of your sacrifice, we can be righteous, Lord. And so we come to you this morning to rejoice and sing your praises. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. What a privilege it is, Lord. And we lift our, our nation to you and our leaders, Lord. Oh, boy. We really need help, Lord. And so we just come before you now on behalf of them, Lord. All of the nation, Lord. Right, right, right from the top on down to the dog catcher in the local town, Lord. We just ask that you be with all of them. In Jesus' name. If you're able, stand with me. If not, just be sure you're standing up on the inside. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. Seventeen hundreds, and he was of all things at the time a slave. He ran a slave ship, but he had a little mother praying for him in England, and eventually he became a born again. Was a great preacher, and you know what? He wrote this song. Amazing! It's everybody's song, isn't it? I once was lost, but now I'm found. So as you sing the last verse of this, just think of what a wonderful thing God has done. When we been there ten thousand years, I shining as the sun. We lonely days to sing God's praise. And when we first begun, oh God, that makes us want to jump for joy thank you lord thank you lord that you've taken care of the future lord thank you hallelujah 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 the poor 
mortals is waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Jesus, we just come to you this morning and we just ask you to preside over these, this time of worship and time of just digging into your word. Lord, we just ask right now that your spirit would move among us, that our hearts and our minds would be open and ready to receive what your spirit has to teach us this morning. This morning's lesson, Lord, is perhaps in the top rank of those of most import. Lord, we just ask that you would, your spirit would minister to us, that we would be assured and that we would know exactly who we are, that we would know that our identity is found in you. Bless us now as we go and dig into your word. I just ask, Lord, that your spirit would move this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, have a seat. Ah. 
Shakespeare in Hamlet said it like this. This above all to thine own self be true. Now the author of The Invisible Man, Rolf Ellison, said something similar. What he said was, when I discover who I am, I'll be free. You know, the secular world, it understands that identity, it's an important factor in one's well-being. And they call it self-awareness. You know, knowing who you are becomes the ultimate goal because they understand that until you have a grasp of who you are, that you'll tend to flounder and wander through life with no real direction or fulfillment. Now, Scripture, it, it, it certainly validates this principle. And the account in which Jesus addresses uh, Simon Peter's identity certainly has a profound impact on the man and on his life's direction. He actually spends the rest of his life living up to Jesus calling him to be a rock. You also know that there are a multitude of voices that are trying to push people to embrace different truths about identity. And the result is mass confusion. Mass confusion about who a person really is. And I believe that same confusion, it has a tendency to invade the church because so many of us are uncertain about our identity. And this keeps us from operating at a level of effectiveness and influence. It keeps us from operating at a level of authority that is ours through Christ. And I'm thankful this morning that we don't have to be confused. We can go straight to the author and the finisher of our faith. And he very clearly speaks to us and informs us about us who we are. He takes the time to point out, point by point. He gives us precise information about who we are and how we are to live. In essence, when, when Jesus opens his mouth in the two and a half chapters that we're going to examine over the next couple of weeks, he is literally saying, this is us. This is who we are. In Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read verses 1 through 12. And that's what we're going to base this morning's uh, sermon on. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus says, this is us. We're blessed. Blessed. 
Now, here's the issue. Too many of us listen to and compare our situation with confidants or associates or to societal standards, even our coworkers and classmates. Or those same folks lend commentary to our current condition or status in life. And subsequently, we've entertained the idea that we aren't blessed. In fact, some of you may have not only questioned your blessedness, if that's even a word, but you have even come to the conclusion that not only are we not blessed, but you are in fact cursed. All because of what's going on in your life financially, physically, emotionally. You think, oh, I surely can't be who Jesus said I am. Therefore, you think you're cursed. Let's go back and look at what Jesus said and see if that maybe he speaks to our current situation. And yet, he still comes to the conclusion that we are blessed. See, he says even that, that we are blessed even if we are at the end of our rope. We are blessed even if we have lost what is most dear to us. We're content. We're blessed even when we are hungry for God. We're blessed even when we are full of cares. When we are in the middle of conflict and trying to play peacekeeper. We're blessed even when we are persecuted. We're blessed when people talk bad about us. When people lie about us. You see, Jesus, in, in mere statements, he hits every one of us. He touches on our present condition. He says that in spite of those uncomfortable and undesirable things existing in our life, we are blessed. Could it be that we are more blessed than we actually comprehend? But if the things that he lists don't impact our state, which is blessed, our state where we are favored and honored, then maybe we need to realize that being blessed is a greater gift than we know. Could it simply be that we overestimate the pain or the length or the impact of what we are facing and we actually underestimate the depth and degree of our blessed condition? See, the enemy, he wants us to forget. He wants us to overlook the fact that we are blessed. Why? If we do not reframe our thinking, if you are circumstances through the eyes of, an, of the incredible blessings and assurances we have in Christ, we will quickly question God's goodness and love, when earthly blessings seem to fall on everyone but us. Did you get that? If we do not reframe our thinking to view our circumstances through the eyes of the incredible blessings and assurances we have in Christ, we will quickly question God's goodness and love when earthly blessings seem to fall on everyone but us. Ephesians 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. No matter what we receive or don't receive in this temporal form here on earth, 
we can rest in the fact that we have been given every blessing through the complete work of Christ, his righteousness, his resources, his privilege, position, and power. That's why we are also promised suffering, hardships, and trials. We can also rest in the truth that he often works these spiritual blessings into our lives through the circumstances that most people would not consider to be blessings. We may not see the whole picture right up front or as we're going through it, but God has a way of working it out for our good. Some of the greatest spiritual blessings in my life have actually come through these undesired earthly circumstances. I mean, I was a drug-using biker at one time, and now I'm standing here preaching God's Word. That's God using circumstances. We need to know, and in fact, we must know, that we are blessed. Because knowing we are blessed, it's going to impact our outlook. It's going to impact our demeanor and our attitude. It'll even impact our response and our cooperation. And unless we know who we are when God works spiritual blessings into our lives, through the use of those difficult seasons, we will fail to recognize blessing and perhaps even become bitter and actually fight him as he works all things together for our good. So, are you reacting like someone blessed or like someone cursed? If we know we are blessed, then when we're attacked, we stand. If we don't know that we're blessed, then we either strike back or begin to retreat. If we know we're blessed, then when we are lied about, when someone lies about us, We bless those who spitefully use us. If we don't know we're blessed, then we will defend ourselves and try to get even. See the contrast here? If we know we are blessed, then when we struggle, we still lift up our heads because we know our help comes from the Lord. We don't know we are blessed, then we'll quit and throw in the towel and and give up too soon. See, being blessed is a demeanor. You see what's wrong rather than what's right? See, it's a matter of focus. What do you focus on? Take a second. Examine your situation. Realize that as unchosen or undesirable or uncomfortable as it may be, remember, you are blessed. You ever met one of those folks who, when asked how they are doing, They always respond, I'm blessed. Uh, You know, it isn't a trite response. It really isn't. Uh, It is, in fact, an accurate account of our condition. Uh, Yeah, but your life is hard. But I'm blessed. 
You lost your job and money is extremely tight. Yeah, but I'm blessed. Or the one you loved the most is gone. True, that's what happened to me, but it doesn't change who I am. I'm still blessed. Or you could even be faced with tragedy and trouble and, and trials. But this is us. We're blessed. We are blessed. And until we embrace that we are blessed, we can't be a blessing. When we understand that we are blessed, then we are able to be a blessing to others. See, otherwise, our willingness to bless others is going to be based on whether or not things are going well in our lives at that moment. You know, I've experienced from those that are struggling, that are having hard times, I've been blessed by them because they count themselves blessed. And when we know that we are blessed, even while we are sick, we can reach out to the sick. While we are down, we can encourage the downcast. And while we are broken, we can help restore. And even while we're limping, can support those who can't walk. Why? How? Well, let's look at this. The Greek word translated blessed in these passages is, and I actually listened to this, but I still can't remember the pronunciation, so Herb, could you help me out here? Makarai. M-A-K-A-R-I-O-I. Anyhow, I listen to it over and over, and I still can't pronounce it. I, that is one gift that God has not given me as other languages. I struggle with the English language enough. <laughs> Anyhow. This Greek word, it means to be fully satisfied. And being fully satisfied has nothing to do with monetary gain or material wealth or perfect circumstances or any of that stuff. So if you don't view yourself as blessed, you just simply don't understand you. So how do we get there? How do we get there? We believe that Paul was right when he asked, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? or are persecuted, or hungry, or destitute, or in danger, or threatened with, with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the power of, powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Love it. Romans 8, 35 through 39. I'd ask that Norman come back up. And Marla. Perhaps you know that you are blessed. But you, the, the struggle is still there. So maybe through the lyrics of a song it can help remind you. Maybe that the lyrics of this song would resonate with you and you would remember that you are blessed. The song goes like this. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll away, that's conditions aren't easy. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, in other words, in any circumstance, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but in whole, is nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. This is us. We are blessed. So I'd ask, would you stand with me? And, and let's sing this hymn together, please. And as we enter into a time of worship this morning... Let's worship our great God. Let's give him all our praise and thanks. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well for you that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, sorry, we'll move to the last verse. Let's start that verse over, okay? And Lord, hey. 
just the day when the faith shall be signed. The clouds be broken as a stroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall My soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. A good psalm to remember at times like this is 91. Let's sing a little bit of it together this morning. I'd like to say something in regard to our music department. Uh, it seems like it's been under attack from something. Our piano died. Yesterday, my accordion died. I got a call up uh, where I got it in near Detroit. Detroit. I went through the owner's manual and nothing helped me. It, you can't turn it on, I can't turn it off, so you can't play it. It's electric. <laughs> I, uh, we're playing on this little thing. I feel, remember the, the Peanuts uh, cartoon, Charlie uh, Schultz? Uh, Schneider. Peanuts, he had a little friend, I think his name was Schroeder. Schroeder, Schroeder yeah. He sat on the floor and he had a little piano about this long. That's what I feel like here. <laughs> but we're, do, we're doing the best we can. Yeah. We've got buttons, I haven't pushed these for so long, I forgot where they are, but uh, we'll, we'll make something happen here. Otherwise, sing loudly, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I get this thing going here. Um, Music with these things is uh, you got to push the bu right button at the right time and then it's better. Here we go. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Secret place of the most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty, and I shall say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I trust, and I shall say of the Lord, He is my refuge. My God in him will I trust. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high, most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I shall say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust, and I shall say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Say it with me, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Amen. him will I trust. Even though it looks like everything's going to hell in a handbasket, he will be our trust and our refuge. Hallelujah. Come and worship, royal priesthood. Come and praise him, holy name. Worship Jesus, our Redeemer. He is precious, King of glory. Come and worship, royal priesthood. Come and praise Him, holy nation. Worship 
Jesus, our Redeemer, He is precious, King of glory. Jesus, we enthrone you. trust is in you and my, my hope is in you. You are my rock and my fortress. You are my deliverer and my strength. You are my shield, my buckler, and my horn of salvation. Lord, I say to you, you are my refuge and you are my shelter. You are my hiding place. I will put my trust in you because I know your name. 
Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. And though you slay me, I will still trust you. Lord, I just come to you this morning. Just pray that each and every one here would truly understand that they are blessed. Regardless of their circumstances, regardless of, of the struggles they're going through or, or the loss or pain, they're still blessed. We trust you, Lord, with all that we are and all that we have. We lay them at your feet. Use us. Empower us through your spirit and use us in this broken and messed up world. Use us to proclaim the gospel boldly without fear. Lord, we just come to you and, and seek your guidance, your wisdom. We ask your mercy. This world is falling apart. Help us to be the light to shine the truth of Jesus. And the light often shines the brightest at the darkest times. Help us to be that light. Help us to be that light, Lord. Go with us today as we journey back to our lives outside of this gathering. Help us to take the truths of who we are, that we identify as sons and daughters of the Most High God because of what Jesus did for us. Our identity comes through Christ, Christ alone. Help us to carry that through our day to day, through the rest of our week. Bless us now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. God bless you all. I, I hope you have a fantastic week. Um, just a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, we are starting a... I, I, we have actually, as a church, have started this food drive a few weeks back. But uh, officially... Uh, as this church is part of the Mid County Ministerium, um, we are officially starting a food drive for the rest of the month of August, all the way up to the end of August. So, if you have food goods that you want to bring in for the pantry, uh, non perishable canned goods, dry goods, um, even personal items like razors and shaving cream and stuff like that, deodorant, yes. People that need. Uh, Food oftentimes need personal care items as well. So um, bring it in. Uh, we're going to keep collecting all the way through the end of the month, and uh, we'll uh, get, it, get it all dropped off. I, I actually plan on this week getting this, what we have here today, dropped off. Um, can't hear you. 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. I, I'm sorry. I forgot about that. Uh, this um, food drive is actually in conjunction with Thrivent. Uh, someone had put a grant, a grant request in from Thrivent, and uh, they gave them a grant, which was given to the food pantry already. Um, also, uh, the new owners of the family restaurant in town here uh, have said that for anybody that brings in a non-perishable item um, to the restaurant, uh, they'll receive a, a either 10% off of their current order or a coupon good for their next order uh, at the family restaurant, 10%. So, and then at the end of the, the drive, or periodically as they get too much at the restaurant, they'll, of course, bring them here to get uh, donated to the food pantry. So uh, a lot of good things going on in the community. Um, for those of you that uh, missed out on the Sidewalk Profits um, virtual concert that we did a few weeks back, um, I have another date for one. Uh, if you're interested, let me know so that I can actually solidify the date. They gave me a list of them uh, going through to the end of September. Uh, and we would do that right here in the church. It is actually a live concert. It's not a recorded stream. It is a live concert right from Nashville. Um, and they were absolutely amazing. They were, it was a phenomenal concert. Um, they gave us a, our church here a great shout-out the last time, and uh, which was pretty cool. So uh, if you're interested, show up. Uh, let me know, and we will set the date. Uh, it's uh, usually on a, a Wednesday night, I believe it is. So, um, any other announcements that you can think of? Nope. Okay. I have one more. And Gil reminded me of this this morning. I have these little testaments from the Pocket Testament League. Uh, if you're interested in having them on hand so that you can hand them out to people, by all means, let me know. And I will get you some. I have a bunch of them. So they're free for the taking. Um, the only thing that I would encourage you to do is, in the back of it, when you give this to someone, let them know about this. They can get online, because we are in the digital age. Uh, they can actually get online and, and uh, register to actually get a devotional. And then they can register this number that's on a sticker back here. And that helps me to track how many of these get into people's hands and change a life. So, kind of cool that way. And I think that's it. Um, God bless you guys. We love you. And have a fantastic week.